adventures of Jungle Jim. The adventures of Jungle Jim broadcast weekly over this station are dramatized from the full color action pictures to be found in the Comic Weekly. The world's greatest comic supplement that comes to you each week with your Hearst Sunday newspaper. Join the 11 million adults and 6 million youngsters who make their weekends more enjoyable reading the world's greatest comic and adventure pictures by the world's best artists featured in every issue of the Comic Weekly. Insist on the Sunday newspaper that brings you the Comic Weekly. Anthony Lowry, a wealthy plantation owner, has been playing host to Jungle Jim and Shanghai Lil at a very exclusive club in Singapore. He tells Jim... He has come over 6,000 miles to enlist his aid in solving a very strange case. He also tells Jim the history of an old sea captain whose clipper was wrecked on Nahia Island in the South Seas in the early 1800s. Captain Stone and his descendants ruled the island justly, bringing peace and prosperity to the natives. The last of the family, one Peter Stone, leaves the island and the natives mourn his loss and pray for his return. Twenty years later, a stranger arrives on the island saying that he is Peter Stone. The natives welcome him as their lost ruler, but their happiness soon turns to sorrow. For instead of peace and prosperity, this Peter Stone brings with him terror, murder, and despotism. This convinces Lowry that the man who calls himself Peter Stone is a usurper, but knows where the real Peter Stone is. So Jim volunteers to go with Lowry to find the real Peter Stone. The following morning, Jim tells Colo to prepare for the journey. Well, Colo, we aren't going to enjoy a very long stay in Singapore this time. Hmm. You find new case, Tuan Jim? No, this case found me. I've agreed to help Mr. Lowry on a rather tough case, Colo. I imagine he won't lose much time in getting started. Ah. Where we go this time, Tuan? Somewhere in the South Seas. South Seas be very big place. Lot of island. Yes, sir, Colo. Now, um, I'm not sure yet, but I think we'll be headed for Nahia. Nahia? Uh-huh. Wait, I'll show it to you on the map here. Let's see, now. It's right there. Go down here, see it? Uh, that be very hard place to get. Big steamer not go that way, Tuan. Yeah, you're right, Colo. That's one of my first problems. How are we going to get there? Well, he didn't say how he came here. We'll probably go partway by some small liner then transfer to one of the coast vessels that makes calls to the island. Yes, Tuan. Take a long time to go. Mm, I imagine so. But uh, you get busy today, Colo. We'll need everything new as we lost all our equipment on that Stacy case. Uh, see what it is, Colo. Yes, Tuan. Yes, Mr. Bradley. I'm... Oh, come in, Mr. Lowry. Oh, good morning, Jim. Afraid I might be a little bit too early. Not at all, Tony. I've been up for a couple of hours. Been making arrangements with Colo here about the trip. Colo is my right hand man, Tony. Oh. I wouldn't think of going anywhere without him. The greatest man in emergency you could wish for. Well, I'm glad to hear that, because if I'm not mistaken, there's going to be plenty of emergencies to use him in, Jim. Well, we've had plenty of experience, Tony. Oh, uh, uh by the way, yes. Where and how are we uh, going to begin this hunt for the real Peter Stone? Well, that's what I came to see you about, Jim. It was too late last night to go into any more details, and, well, I must confess, after I got your acceptance, I was much too enthusiastic to think of anything else. Well, um, after studying the maps, my first problem was transportation. <laughs> well, you can forget that right now. Hmm? Will you just step over to the window here and look out into the yacht basin? right Oh, Ah, see that trim white yacht out there? Uh, you mean the... Uh... Big job with the sloping funnel? That's it. That's mine. And if you will forgive my boasting, I'll guarantee that that little ship will take you anywhere you want to go. And what's more to the point, she'll bring you back. Boy, I should say it would. That looks like a small addition of an ocean liner. (laughs) Well, that's about what she is, Jim. There's everything on that yacht that you need for comfort. With the possible exception of a swimming pool... But then we're going to have all of the South Pacific to bathe in, so maybe we won't miss the pool on board. (laughs) Right. Yes, she's one of the finest vessels in the Pacific waters. Well, Tony, that's the uh, transportation problem settled, and uh, might say, and how? (laughs) I was wondering how you made the journey up here. Well, there's your answer. Oh, by the way, I brought a few friends along. 
I'd like you to meet them before you go aboard. Oh, fine, Tony, but um, first, uh, when do you figure on sailing? Whenever you are ready, Jim. Well, I could sail tonight, but uh, you know how women are. Women? Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, a woman, to be more specific, Mr. Vriel. Oh, so she's going along, too. Oh, absolutely. Mr. Vriel has never missed one of my adventures yet. We couldn't leave her behind for anything in the world. Oh, splendid, splendid. Glad to have her, Jim. As I was saying, it might take Lil a day or two preparing. She'll have to completely outfit herself after our last trip. Well, I'll leave the sailing date entirely up to you. Just as long as you give me 24 hours notice to get supplies aboard and arrange clearance with the port authorities. Fine, then I'll get busy immediately and see that Mr. Real does her shopping as soon as possible. So there'll be no delay in getting away to an early start. A few days later, the wealthy Tony Lowry's yacht with Jim, Lil, and Colo aboard sets out on the return journey to the South Seas. Among Lowry's friends who have accompanied him on his trip is a vivacious young widow named Mrs. Catherine St. John. She immediately takes great fancy to Jim. As soon as dinner is over on the first night at sea, she hurries to find Jim, who at the moment is enjoying a quiet moment to himself on deck. Oh, Oh, Mr. Bradley, there you are. I've been looking for you ever since dinner. Well, uh, here I am, Mrs. St. John. Oh, please, Mr. Bradley. Not Mrs. St. John. It's so formal. Won't you please call me Kitty? If you wish, Mrs. Uh, I mean, Kitty. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. And may I call you Jim? Well, certainly. That's what I'm usually called. Oh, isn't it a perfect, a beautiful night? Isn't the moon wonderful? Yes, it's an ideal night for sailing, all right. Mm -hmm. Tony told us all about you and your perfectly amazing adventure, Jim. You've certainly lived a colorful life. It must be so wonderful to be able to live the life you've led. It hasn't always appeared quite such a bed of roses to me, but it's the kind of a life that I enjoy. It's wonderful. Especially to a poor, sheltered soul like me. It's thrilling to me to even meet someone like you, Jim. Especially meeting you under such romantic circumstances. Romantic circumstances? Well, how do you mean? Why, Jim, here, sailing the South Sea, under a perfectly gorgeous tropical moon. Don't you feel the romantic spell of it? I do. It's Beautiful tropical nights have a definite appeal to everyone's emotions. It can make one either gloriously happy or inexpressibly lonely. And as for me, I'm so lonely. So very, very lonely. Um, yes, uh, yes, I, I can readily see how it affects some people, but, uh, well, I, I've been kept too busy to ever experience any emotions, I guess. Uh, generally, with danger lurking in the jungles, my first thought has always been of keeping myself and those in my command safe and sound. Uh, and uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I'll have to hurry away and locate Tony Laurie. There are several important matters I have to talk to him about. Oh, Jim, surely you can forget business on such a perfectly beautiful night as this. Oh, let's sit out and enjoy the moonlight. Well, uh, uh, I'd like to very much, but, uh, well, I'm, I'm like a soldier. When duty calls, I've got to answer. So, uh, so excuse me, please. But, Jim, dear, I do so want oh, to. Oh, there you are, Jim. I'm just looking for you. As a matter of fact, I was just about to hunt you up. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. St. John. Certainly. Oh, forgive me, Kitty, for taking Jim away from you, but this is really important. I thought it was about time I came to rescue you. Boy, am I glad you did. <laughs> now, don't tell me a big, strong, outdoor man like you is afraid of a... Poor little frail thing like Kitty St. John. Yes, sir, I may as well admit it. But you know what they say about the female of the species being more deadly. Deadly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come now, Jim. Why, Kitty's a flighty little thing, a little languid, perhaps, but harmless. Her husband died two years ago, and Kitty's been so very, very lonely. Uh, yes, uh, so I gathered. Mm. She's taken quite a fancy to you. You've made quite an impression on her, Jim. It's been to you right away. 
Oh, I can't say that I blame her. Say, Tony, quit kidding me, will you? Deliver me from that clinging vine type. Ah, you're no gentleman, Jim. Well, why not? What's my being a gentleman got to do well, with... you know what they say. Gentlemen prefer blonde. Well, if a preference for blondes is the qualification of a gentleman, I'm afraid I can't measure up. <laughs> uh... Oh, say, uh, yes? you haven't seen Mr. Briel, have you? Why, yes. As a matter of fact. Yes, she was sitting out on the deck with me, watching Kitty, setting her cap for you. What? I guess she didn't enjoy it any more than you did. She got up and left. Oh, good. I'll go pay her a call. I'm afraid you're a little bit late, Jim. She went off to bed. I tried to entertain her up on deck, even invited her to a hand of bridge. But, no, after watching you and Kitty, she begged off and went to bed. Well, uh, I'll try calling her. She may have changed her mind. See you later. turned in yet? You must have missed her. She probably went up on deck again. Well, fancy meeting you again, Jim. I guess you didn't have your little meeting with Tony after all. Why not come up forward? There's two very comfortable chairs up there. And the moon is more wonderful than ever. Really, it is. Won't you join me? Love Your Magic Spell is everywhere. That is, almost everywhere, except where Jim is concerned. It looks as though all his past perils will fade into insignificance compared to the peril of the persistent Kitty St. John. It's going to be pretty tough for Jim to be able to dodge Kitty on that yacht. And from the appearance of things, the only one who is enjoying the little one-sided romance is Tony Lowry. Evidently, Shanghai Lil is a little piqued over it. But don't miss the next episode in the adventures of Jungle Jim. Remember, you can follow these adventures in the full-color action pictures which appear in the Comic Weekly. The world's greatest comic supplement containing the best full-color adventure and comic pictures. Remember, no other comic supplement can give you the top names of cartoon land, like the list of all-star favorites to be found in the Comic Weekly. The whole family follow the fun and frolics of Jiggs and Maggie, and the Little King, the immortal Donald Duck, as well as the exciting adventures of Flash Gordon and Jungle Jim. Join the 11 million adults and 6 million youngsters who every week find the greatest of home entertainment in the Comic Weekly, which comes to you with your Hearst Sunday newspaper. More thrilling radio adventures of Jungle Jim will be heard at the same time next week over the same station. Be sure to tune in. <laughs>